All right, so where I left off, I created with the pen tool this arch for the top of my visor. But I wanted to leave the bottom edge that I had already created with the pencil tool and, and other aspects. So then I overlapped it. I have it at 52%. I'm going to take it back up to 100%. And now I'm going to merge it by holding down Shift and Command so that these paths are overlapping. You'll see them here, both selected. And then just use Pathfinder, which you can always find in the windows, to merge them together. Let me try that one more time. Make sure they're selected. There we go, merge together. Now there are still gonna be little nitpicky things and this is not professional logo design, this is learning logo design. So I do not need you to fix every little issue because you get a week and a half rather than months and months to develop this and refine it. But there will be little hiccups, where did I see it? <laughs> Where was it? Like that curve is a little off. There's this little hiccup here. The reason it recenters every time I zoom in is because it's averaging on the whole shape. So that's annoying. So sometimes you just want to deselect to zoom in. And there it is, that little hiccup. So the reason you want to understand the pin tool is so you can always see those anchors and understand what you can do with them. So I'm going to just, just nudge that anchor right there. And then if I decide I want to, I might even round that anchor out a little bit. Got to use a small selection tool, that's why. I'm going to convert it. Oh, that didn't work. What is going on? Let's see. Oh, so I'll just play with this curve. It's fine. All right. And then this one is a little wonky. So I can use my pencil tool and try to smooth it out with a nice arc and then use my smooth tool. But again, these don't need to be perfection yet, right? Just trying to learn the basics. So now I have all this complicated stuff back here. And I think the pencil tool is a better way to do that than the pen tool because it's mostly organic. So I'm going to build on to something I've already drawn and extend it. And build it out. I have way too many shapes going on. but you can just build in chunks until it makes more sense to you. But what I like about this design is how it goes between soft and, and hard edges. Yeah, I don't even know if that's worth keeping. Hmm. All right. Tough. So I'm going to extend from here instead before I get into the complicated bit. 
and I'll just keep these separated for now. And I know I'm off. That's because just like when you're inking something, sometimes the angle of the paper matters. So I can show you how you can change that, but I'm moving so many places. So if you hold down spacebar, you get to the move tool as you're zoomed in, you can kind of just, or the hand tool, and you can kind of move around. If you, oh, well, you don't have the hand tool in your basic settings here. Let's see. There is a, a hand tool option that you can put into the toolbar and an image rotation option that goes with it. So they're under navigate. So if I wanted to move the hand tool in, I could, but basically spacebar will get you to it. Then I can keep using the pencil tool. I'm going to take this opacity down a little bit so I can see my sketch and then just work on refining it. Just like cutting out with scissors. Now I'm adhering pretty closely to my sketch because I worked hard on refining this sketch to be what I wanted. But you can also, of course, use these tools, especially the pin tool, which gives you better curves, better straights than you can draw freehand. You can always improve upon your sketch idea, and you're encouraged to do that. That's why people like Illustrator, is it makes their work look more professional and cleaner. Especially, I was pretty wobbly there, but I have that smooth setting. So it's not being fully accurate. Instead, it's averaging out a little bit and making them a little bit stronger. Each line I make. Now, how do I cut out a chunk? Well, I draw a new shape inside. I make sure to close it. And then I subtract that by holding down Shift and Command from the one behind it and then using Pathfinder and cut it out. So we're getting there. Keep using pencil tool, because by the end of today, I want to have a finished black vector that I can bring into Photoshop in order to make print ready and then put up to canvas, because you can't put a vector up online. Logo design will often have little repetitions in shapes. So like these crenellations, I can echo here, the slightly rounded. Even though it's a dynamic design, I'll save my horizontal as just an accent right there. But every little nuance matters. So people can really kind of kill themselves trying to get Illustrator to work well for them. Okay, and then here we have the Alamo Colleges logo just kind of turned upside down. So I'm going to try to do this fairly accurately. And I already messed up. But that's how it goes. And because I started not on an existing path, it's going to overlap and not going to change any existing vector anchors that I put through. Oh. Fill that with black. Oh, it looks terrible. <laughs> so I'm going to change this to be a little less smooth. I need to do more of these sharp angle changes. 
Smooth does not always like that. Ah. So you're seeing the frustrations of the pencil tool. Trying to draw through an existing anchor to redraw like magic scissors, but I have to end on the path. And sometimes that can be a real pain. See, if I have it set to less smooth, it's going to plot more anchors for me, which gives it a more hand-drawn feel. All right, I'm getting frustrated. So it was working great before. There we go. So when you inevitably get frustrated, just try to do small parts at a time. You can always move to another part of the logo. And that's where the, the simplicity of the logo is always the goal. You're not trying to have so many components. Mine's got a lot. But I want to see how this works out as a vector. Okay, I'm going to shift it back to being smoother and work on some of these bigger shapes. You double click on the pencil tool, on the tool icon itself, and you'll see the tool options. Yep, unlike Photoshop, it doesn't give you the options up at the top. You have to double click on it. Okay, now I can merge these shapes with my existing shapes just by holding down Shift and Command and then using Pathfinder, merging them together. So they're all one shape. And any time I want to check kind of how it looks, I can just turn off my sketch. And decide, do I need another component there? That doesn't look too bad. But then when you merge together, you'll have little things like this that happen. And then I need to clean those up with the pencil tool. First select them so you can see the anchor points. And then redraw. Keep saving your work as you go. I'm going to add in another little detail here, which I think is needed, just a thinner line. But that's about as thin as I would ever get with this logo. Because when it gets small, you're not going to see that. But I want it to feel like a mechanism. So that's a different part. All right, now in here. Add to it, and then I'm going to merge it all together. Command and then shift. Make sure everything's overlapping. Then Pathfinder. Pathfinder is really the professional tool. You can't do a lot of the important stuff in Illustrator without it. Merging together, cutting things out. And it's not obvious where it is or what it is. So 
just getting used to using that will do a lot for your professional practices.